Carolyn Doobie here and today I'm playing in my art journal. I'm going to make this page and along the way I'm going to share with you a bunch of tips and tricks for using watercolor crayons, unmounted rubber stamps, and all my usual stuff you get in a video. The inspiration for this art journal page came from this sheet of unmounted rubber stamps from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. What I've got there is an acrylic block. You can use anything to mount these onto. I have got a piece of double-sided tape that I'm hiding, apparently off camera here, as I'm putting it on the acrylic block. I'm going to leave a little bit over on the edge and I'm going to kind of wad it up in my fingers so that it's basically easier to grab when the tape is no longer sticky. After I've used it, you know, so many times, it makes it easy and I just pull that double-sided tape back off and then put the next piece on next time I want to add on some rubber stamps. So what I'm doing right now with this whole sheet of rubber, I could use it as a whole sheet or I can cut apart the individual stamps. For today, I've decided I'm going to cut apart the individual stamps. And I promise you, later in this video, I'm actually going to do more of this stuff actually within the frame of the camera. For some reason, I just seem to want to hide this very secretive part of cutting apart the rubber stamps. So I'm going to cut out the images that I want. The four main animals are really what I'm after today. Once I've got them cut apart, then I'm going to come in and just trim off any excess edges. That way it'll stamp cleanly for me since I'm a pretty sloppy stamper, but I know that doesn't shock you at all. I'm going to use a waterproof ink. This happens to be archival ink from Ranger. And I'm just stamping these on uh, big index cards. I'm going to stamp them and I'm going to cut them out. The reason why I stamp two or three of each is because as long as I have the stuff out, why not do it? I'll use those in something else, some other way. And now for a moment of seriousness, I'm kind of concerned about my ability to understand where the camera is and my ability to keep my hands there today. For some reason, I keep pulling things just at the edge of the camera and wow, oh my, have I got to get better about this. And by the way, everybody, I would like a gold star because I actually fussy cut these. And to those of you that do very detailed cutting and those kinds of things, you're probably looking at this and thinking, wow, that's not that detailed a thing to cut out. But for me, it's as fussy cutting as I get. Well, now I'm going to bring in Mary Nasser's Around the World Latitude Stencil, and I am going to trace this. I don't trace very often, but this stencil is so easy to trace. How can I not do this? I'm using a permanent or waterproof black fine point pen to do this. Not even sure which one it is. As long as it's waterproof, it'll be fine because what I'm about to do to this is going to involve some water. But before I do that, I'm going to need to color those animals. So I've got the world on there. Now it's time to add some color. I've got my animals cut out and I just flip to a blank page in my art journal and that way it captures the spray ink and I don't waste anything. Using some Dilutions ink, I am just squirting those, each their own color. You know I was going to get a rainbow involved in this. There just wasn't enough color happening yet. Once I've got those done, now it's time to add color to the world. What I'm using are the Neocolor 2's Water Soluble Crayons. And I'm just tracing over those lines so it looks like some little kid is drawing with a crayon until I add water to it. That is just plain old water on a brush. And all of a sudden, I'm going to get this great watercolory look. I'm going to get some variation in it. And you can see how much brighter and more vivid those colors are once I add water to it. These really, really work extremely well with water because I think that's what they were designed to do. But anyway, so I was thinking I was just going to stay with the blue and white theme because, you know, it's a globe, the world. But no, I couldn't do that. I am very carefully and neatly coloring inside the lines, going precisely to the edges. Yeah, and if you're believing that, have I got some bridges I need to sell you. I am just scribbling in there. I am not being precise. And you guessed it, I'm going to go back with some water on top of that. And it's really going to change how it looks. It's just so cool how it completely changes it. One of the things I do have to watch out for this, though, is actually cleaning off my brush, which I'm usually somewhat terrible about. Because as I flip from color to color, it's going to get some color transfer that can add some interest or it can make it really ugly. So that's what I'm trying to watch out for. So I am actually really cleaning off my brush in that water when I'm usually not that careful about it. Definitely some of the blue from the edges is sneaking in because everything's wet. If I'd let things dry, I wouldn't have as many colors run together, but 
That would mean waiting for something to dry it. We can't have that happen. One of the things I think the world needs a whole lot more of is play, because I know in my life things have been a whole lot better since I've added a lot more art and play into it. So I'm going to use that word on this page. As I'm putting the paint down around the word play, I'm doing it fairly carefully because I want that to be a fairly crisp image here using the um, use your word stencil, which is technically a mask, but you know what, you know how to use these things. So what I'm doing now around it is I'm just putting the paint around it because all I want is the word play and you can isolate just one word from this stencil or really any stencil. I am going to come around and just sort of paint over the other words. I'm going to fill in the whole page. Now I'm using a big old stenciling brush here and that's not going to let me get in very carefully, very closely. So I'm going to come in with a smaller, finer brush to let me do the detail work around this. At one point I had the idea that maybe I would leave this whole area white and as soon as that blue paint hit it, I decided I'm going to cover the whole white area other than the word play, of course, with the blue paint. So while I fill this in, I'm going to do a little shameless plug here. If you feel like you're learning something new, if you're feeling inspired by this video and you would like to see more of my videos, I'd love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you've got friends who you think would enjoy this video, I'd love it if you'd share this with them. Every time you share one of my videos, comment on my blog, leave a comment on the video, all those things feed my muse and get me back in the studio, get me back in making more videos. Well, my muse says it's time now to add those animals on top of the world. I'm going to use that trusty Yoohoo glue stick because I didn't want to use gel medium because I would get some runnage and smearage because it's dilution zincs that react to water. And as I'm putting these down, they want to curl up. Now, if I just held them down for a moment, they would have stayed down, but I'm just not that interested in taking the time to hold them down myself. So that's what the handy dandy paint jars are for. And so just that little bit of pressure and then they'll stay where they're supposed to. Now, I kept looking at this thinking, yeah, I'm going to leave that white space on the play. I want this crisp word up there. And you know what? It's not going to stay that way. Took the orange crayon and went around it. You know, all that careful painting that I did. And then I'm going to go and do this to it. You know, I just never know where things are going to go when I'm playing around. Well, that just didn't give me quite the look I wanted. So I grabbed one of those new food. I don't know if it's new. It's new to me. The, the food, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, pen that can write over anything. And I'm going to test it and see if it really can write over anything. And by golly, it can. Because that was crayon that was there. And apparently it was still too much white for me. So by putting the yellow crayon in the middle and then taking that water to activate it, well, it turns out you need to kind of let the black pen dry a little bit. So I'm pulling a little bit of that around. And, you know, if I'd taken the time to wait for something to dry, I could have done that. But that would involve patience. And really all I wanted to do right now was play and have some fun. And if you want to stay up to date on my play, I've got a newsletter that I send out once or twice a month. And in my newsletter, there are things that I only share with my newsletter friends. So I hope you'll come over and join me. You can find the link down below in the video description here on YouTube or over on my blog at A Colorful Journey. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.